Welcome to City Conversations. Today we have with us some folks who are going to talk to us about the Dogwood Festival, which is a time-honored tradition here in Fayetteville, which started about 35 years ago as a two-week-long festival and has now been reduced and very condensed uh, down into a four-day uh, long weekend festival here in the city of Fayetteville. So with us today we have Carrie and Sarah, the executive director and the marketing coordinator, uh, who are going to tell us a little bit about the Dogwood Festival. So ladies, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. And uh, let, let's just start with uh, how was the Dogwood Festival started, Carrie? Well, it started 36 plus years ago with um, some of our community leaders, uh, Bill Hurley, who was the mayor at the time, and John Malzone, which is a pioneer in the downtown area. Um, they noticed the brilliance of our community in bloom in April, which is the Dogwoods and they decided let's celebrate that rite of passage for our community. So they started producing multiple events and sanctioning them together and kind of forming what was a two week event with events spread out throughout Fayetteville. And um, over the years it's condensed to um, a weekend event in downtown Fayetteville. Well, no, it's very exciting and I've had an opportunity to be part of it for several years now. So really looking forward to this year, but let's talk about what visitors can expect when they come. What is the, the short version, if you will, of uh, the festival itself over the, the weekend? Well, we have something for everyone. Honestly, truly, that is a bold statement and it is a factual statement. Um, we have something, whether it's your interest in music, shopping, arts, craft, our street fair, if it's food, if it's attractions, watching a, an exhibitor, a show, like a BMX show or um, a car show, we truly honestly have something for everyone. It's a traditional street fair, food fair, and um, awesome free concerts. It's a lot of stuff going on in a short amount of time. How long does it take you to plan this event? Well, we start immediately. You know, we actually program seven events per year um, in addition to our signature spring event. Um, so as soon as Dogwood is over, the spring event, we immediately start, you know, with what went wrong, what went well, what can we, you know, tweak and make things better. Um, so we have, a, we have a group that's dedicated to what we do and we are constantly planning, not just this event, but also our After Five series, um, because we try every single year to put our best foot forward for our community and plan premier events. No, that's a lot of work for uh, just the two of you are the only yes. paid? Yes. Only full-time employees. And the rest yes. of this is a nonprofit. Absolutely. And, and how does that work with the board of directors or whatever you call them? Um, we names, we affectionately you? refer to ourselves, um, the board members, as top dogs. Um, that, ha that title has been in existence for many years, and it is true. Um, we have a volunteer staff of 18 members that serve on our board of directors. That's who we receive our, um, you know, go for, uh, so to speak, and we work for them. They are volunteers. and. We meet monthly, uh, and right now, as we're getting closer to the event, we're meeting weekly, and it is a group of dedicated individuals that has nothing vested in this more than just their willingness to do something good for our community. Well, that's awesome that so many people are involved in, in making this a, a truly a community event. Now, yes. if somebody were to be interested in doing this, I know a, folks, a couple of folks I know personally have, have come on and off the board. How do you get involved in, in wanting to do something like this? Um, well, it's, it starts with volunteering. Um, we are definitely a working board. We don't have folks who sit on our, our board that don't contribute. Um, it is a, we're worker bees, absolutely. Um, each one of them has a piece of the puzzle and we collectively come together and produce what is the bigger picture. Okay. So um, it takes them starting in as a volunteer. You have to have volunteered for our group for you know multiple events, a year maybe. Um, giving some, not all of your time like we require of a board member, but uh, being um, vested into our event, so to speak. And uh, we, we do a little trial run with all of our board members for their reasons and ours to make sure that it works for you and, and works for us. So um, we're, we're very fortunate um, and we're a very unique, uh, diverse group of individuals. So I, I, we, I, it is our pleasure to work with them. They're an awesome group of individuals. Okay. It's interesting you say working because I remember last year Curtis Walker, if you yes. remember Curtis, and he and I were stationed together at Bragg for a while, and so uh, I didn't realize he was on the board, and yes. he was floating around downtown, he was in a uh, SUV, gator, a gator. <laughs> and then yeah. he picked up my wife and I and took us somewhere we were going, but again, he was that level of a guy in the weeds and doing work. And, and that's and doing what it takes all of them. Done. It does. It takes every um, different skill set. You know, some, their, their interest and their skills might be pouring 
alcohol, pouring beer, right. that type of thing. And then others are logistics, like Curtis, who has a mind for the way that things work in, you know, setting up, tearing it down, that type of thing. So um, we really try to make sure that with all of our volunteers, not just our board members, that we put them in the key position that works best for them. Right. And, and, and being a nonprofit, I know the money that you make on this goes somewhere. Tell me about how that works. Absolutely. We are a nonprofit organization, so a lot of people um, are under the misconception that this event is produced by the City of Fayetteville. Um, I do want to say that the City of Fayetteville is one of our biggest partners, um, and they, without their contributions um, to our organization and to specifically our premier event, which is the spring event, we couldn't do it. So um, everything that we do is, is raised from sponsorship dollars, and um, that, that takes a lot. <laughs> and um, we also receive revenue from our vendors, um, from soda sales, ice sales, beer sales, those types of things. Those are the things that make our event free to our community. Um, we do work with nonprofit partners to assist us with the production of events. Um, for example, our ice and soda sales. We partner with a nonprofit group um, and they get in return a portion of our proceeds. And over the past 10 years, um, we are proud to say that we have given over $135,000 back to wow. other nonprofit agencies that have helped us produce this event. So um, we have a ton of volunteers, but we also work with a great team of uh, nonprofit individuals that help us. Tara, I mean, put this event together, tear right. it down in every aspect of what we do. Not just Dogwood, our fall festival as well, and, as, and our Fayette Black Fives too. Right. So um, we're constantly looking for those partners and because it takes a lot of hard work. So um, we try to get engaged in the community as much as we can and give back as much as we can. No, that's important. And it's really important too to think about, I know we talked about before coming here, uh, the vendors, most of the folks that you have here with the exception, I think you said of the concert, Mm -hmm. uh, performers or local vendors? 85% um, of the $540,000 budget that we're currently operating on is spent with locals. And um, we're proud to be able to um, toot that horn, so to speak, and right. let everybody know that because um, if, if there's a local provider, we try very hard to use that local provider. Um, the largest part of the money that we spend um, is on entertainment, and obviously those folks live in Nashville and California right. and places like that, but um, we try, um, if, we, if we can't get within the city of Fayetteville or regional, it definitely, we try to make sure that it's at least the state of North Carolina that right. provider we're using. Well, and that is, that's critical. I know that too, for being a city show, I can say this, but mm -hmm. the city council, that's a huge priority of theirs, yes. uh, which is keeping money local when we can, because it helps our economy very directly. Absolutely. Our so. midway provider is a local guy. We, we fought hard to get him in this year and make sure that we had a space for him, and um, that's huge. Right. I mean, not a lot of people have that availability to them. So we try to use local as often as we possibly can. And we'll can. talk about him in a minute because yeah. I'm curious to see where the midway goes this year with the the, uh, the advent of the baseball stadium construction. Mm -hmm. uh, before we shift over to that, tell me, I, between the two of you, because you've been through this once before as well. Yes, this, this will be my second Dogwood Festival. So I've been on board for about a year and a half, and it's been interesting that's for sure <laughs> there's nothing like planning a huge event for your community that's for sure so let me ask you this Sarah what is your favorite part of the festival my favorite part yes. I think it's a surreal moment when you see the large crowd that comes in because you know as Carrie said our team works year-round to produce this event and it's amazing to look down the promenade or look in the park from the stage and see literally hundreds of thousands of people whether it's right here in our community, within the state, or somewhere else in our nation that come for the event. And it's just crazy that we're able to put on this free event for our community. That's probably my favorite part. No, it is, that's a good point, and yeah. it is. It's, uh, we have a city booth, as, as you know, because we work through you to set it up. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we have all kinds of folks out there from the city side, and so we've got our police, our fire, airport, uh, transit, uh, uh, and, and many other outward-facing departments in the city. But when we talk to folks and ask them why are you here where did you come from it is amazing to see that they're not all from Fayetteville there's people that come from other states and other places just for this event and, absolutely and so they really do they come mm -hmm. from far come from afar mm -hmm. uh, to be here which is kind of neat um, switching a little bit over to how good you are I know and I don't want you'll toot your own horn here tell me about the award you all just got well, you just came from a couple days or we weeks did. ago? We just came back from Nashville and we won the event of the year for the Southeast Festival and Events Association. So that is eight states, 
um, we took home the best event for eight states. Well, so congratulations. Thank you. It is, um, we have won every award that there is for a festival. We've won state, we've won Southeast Tourism Society, we've won Southeast, which is one that we just won, and um, we've won on the international level as well for the international festivals and events associations. So, um, uh, Fayetteville, uh, had, we are proud to be able to put this event forward and say that we are an award-winning event. Our event is unique because it's free. You know, um, we have, I mean, uh, not to compare us to Azalea Festival, but they have 38 special uh, coming this year and, and the ticket is $46. We've already had 38 special and it was free to our community. Right. You know, so we, you know, it, it, we're kind of different in the industry. And what sets us apart from a lot of other um, organizations and events is that it's a staff of two. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a board of directors. Um, these people who are working on this large budget as we do, um, they have uh, dozens of staff members. So we, we're really proud of what we do. And um, we know that we produce premier events for our community and we're proud to have the community support. Well, that's awesome. And again, thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> Where he says you can't get something for nothing, but no. in this case, we kind of are. What? We Sometimes. are. We're getting a lot of work out of the two of you and your board Absolutely. for a very small price and, and all of that free for the community, mm -hmm. which is nice. And, and so I know you're always improving and changing things. We talked about, or at least I mentioned in the beginning, how this started as a two week long thing and now it's down to a four day thing. What other changes? I know I was looking at your website. You've changed the day you start with the mm -hmm. time you finish. Tell me about some of the other changes you've got going on this year. Um, I'll let Sarah handle that one. Uh, she's been instrumental in, in the growth that okay. we're currently experiencing. So we've completely expanded our festival. We went from just Friday, Saturday, Sunday to now we're kicking off on Wednesday with a cork and fork event. And then on Thursday, we're going to have a national headlining act right there in the park with food trucks. We're having Jackal and then we're going along with our traditional format on Friday um, and then Saturday and Sunday, but we're also having a BMX show. We're gonna have bungee jumping, all sorts of things. So, and we're extending our Sunday hours. So we truly are changing it from just a three day event to a much longer, really a five day event, four or five day. So we're gonna have four nights of concerts instead of three and then longer hours on Sunday because we're, last year we were just pushing a huge crowd out of the park on Sunday so we were like why push them out let's let's just extend our hours right. so people can enjoy Dogwood for just a little bit longer this year well that, that's good I guess the irony of that is you went from a four two week to a four day mm -hmm. now it's five mm -hmm. so you're an inch back up towards maybe we'll be at the two week event mark again someday mm -hmm. perhaps but, who knows? Uh, but that's good as long <laughs> as you've got the audience to attend and the folks coming mm -hmm. so that, that's really a neat thing um, how many people typically visit our festival what, what, do you have attendance numbers? We um, have an average attendance of 250,000 people. We had some record-breaking record numbers last year. Our Saturday attendance was very high. So hopefully with our extended hours and everything, we'll break that again this year, fingers crossed. <laughs> we, we are going to produce an economic study during our event this year. So we will have a great grasp on, you know, we haven't, we haven't won it produced since 2012. So right. this will be able to give us a fresh perspective and, and temperature of our community. So we're pretty excited okay. about that. And, uh, and what do you think is the biggest draw for the festival? What, what really pulls people in? Is it the concerts? Is it the midway combination of the two? I would definitely say it's our free concerts because that is truly what sets our event apart. People can come and see their favorite country singer for free, whereas if they were to go to somewhere in Raleigh or Wilmington or something, they may have to pay $60 for a ticket, and then they can be right there in Festival Park watching them for free. So, or if it's their you know, favorite band, they can actually purchase front seat tickets for only $25. So you think, you know, you can get into the park for free, see your favorite band, and if you really want those front row seats, you pay $25 and you can be right up there up front. So it's it's really unique and I think those free concerts are really what brings people in. Well, that's a good point and, and I didn't notice that honestly that you could pay for those front row seats. Mm -hmm. I've yes. sat in the back before amidst a bunch of people which is fine <laughs> but if you can have that option for such a cheap amount 
Yeah. That is a great thing. That's something yeah. I'm thinking about doing this year yeah. myself. And it's been uh, very popular. Yeah, I'll yeah. bet. Yeah. And, and, and back to your point on the economic study, that, that is a critical thing because yeah. people are always asking what, what does it mean for the downtown, what does it mean for mm -hmm. the city, and so to have those numbers available I think goes back to showing the strength of mm -hmm. what this thing does from an economic exactly. perspective. Yeah, and to show the taxpayer, we just saved you X amount of dollars on your taxes by increasing the the impact of what we're doing over these days right not just with our signature large event but also with our smaller events sure. that all has an impact on our local economy which us as taxpaying citizens right. it affects them as well no, so absolutely. i mean we're actually helping the community by producing these types of events and um, it takes a lot of work but uh, we're again always proud that the community comes out to support us Let's talk. I think we've got some footage playing now on the concert. Sarah, why don't you tell us a little bit about the performers who are coming this year? Sure. I know you've got quite a variety. You mentioned country. Oh, I know we've yeah. got some some uh, some rap or some hip hop yes. as well. Talk about that for me if you could. So this year we truly feel that we have something for every single person and every person's music taste. We are having rock, country, hip hop, pretty much everything. And we have a mix of local performers and national headliners. So on Thursday, we will be having a rock concert um, right there in Festival Park. We're having Jackal, which is a national um, rock band. And then on Friday... Perfect timing, there they are. Yeah. Not necessarily and a family-focused concert. That's why we chose to do it on Thursday. Okay. Yes. So there's no children's activities going on during that concert. Okay. Yes. Um, we encourage our families. We're going to have plenty of stuff for you on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you know, to come on out on our during our traditional format and then this Thursday night concert is kind of more for couples and friend groups and for them to come out and enjoy a night on a Thursday night. The die hard rockers. The, yeah, <laughs> the die hard rockers. And then Friday we're having kind of an I love the 90s hip hop night and we're pretty excited about it. It's going to be um, some local acts and then we're going to have Young MC, Coolio and Rob Bates. So we know a lot of people are huge fans of them so we were excited to bring them mm -hmm. for our Friday night concert and then Saturday night we you know we always try and have a great country act so we're having Rodney Atkins along with we're gonna have local performers all day um, leading up to him and then on Sunday we're having Zoso which is a widely popular um, Led Zeppelin tribute band so they have we, a uh, we've really been surprised at the number of calls we've gotten for Zozo, the tribute, the Led Zeppelin tribute band. Right. The, and people are like, why don't we have best seats in the house on Sunday? And it's like, yeah. we didn't think we would need them, but yeah. you know, <laughs> now we know. So we, we, we're we really surprised at the, the feedback that we've had for our mm -hmm. concerts this year. It's um, been amazing. First time we've had uh, hip hop as a headliner. Mm -hmm. um, on the They've been on the main stage, but not an evening headliner. So this, this year's first year we're doing that. And um, we've had a lot of positive feedback. Um, as Sarah said, there's certainly a genre and for everybody. Well, that's fantastic. Now, you mm -hmm. mentioned the, the reserve seats. So besides that trick, which, again, I didn't know about until this year as I was reading <laughs> through your website, <laughs> what other tips might you have for concert goers? What can they bring in? Can they bring chairs? Can they bring bottles? Can they bring pets? What are the things that we want to encourage or discourage them from doing? So um, we do encourage people to bring their own chairs and blankets and things like that. But we do discourage, we don't allow coolers and bringing your own drinks. We have plenty of drinks. We have, um, obviously we have beer, we have soda, we have water, we have plenty of um, drinks to go around. Um, and as far as pets, we do, of course, allow service animals. So um, I also would encourage um, festival goers, make sure you do bring cash. Although this is a free event for our community, we have a lot of awesome vendors that we want you to go visit and purchase food, purchase drinks, um, purchase jewelry, different arts and crafts. So, um, you know, just make sure, kind of maybe do a little bit of research ahead. We have everything on our website and see exactly what things you want to go to because um, there is a lot of stuff this year. And so, you know, just come prepared and ready for some fun. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Because idea. this is like the beginning <laughs> of the real warm, right. warm weather. And People kind of, we're, we're kind of, you know, winter's over and now the spring has right. sprung and this is the first major event for our community where people are getting out and about. Sure. And they always forget the sunscreen. So mm -hmm. both of our information stations, 
um, at the Market House and at the top of the promenade. Uh, both of those stations will also um, have sunscreen in case you forget some. Good. That's good to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember, was it last year or the year before, it was extremely hot. Very hot. Very, Very hot. hot. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's kind that. of unexpected sometimes for April, but you, you never, never know. know what you're going to get. Might be snow, but I hope not. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> you mentioned cash, too. If I recall, you've got ATMs getting set up at some point. There's usually yes. one up at the top of Festival Park. We, we have um, about uh, 14, 15 ATMs holy scattered shit, out throughout the festival okay. footprint. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we, we try to make sure that um, everything is as easy as it possibly can be for our patrons. We have, um, we will take credit cards at the areas that Dogwood controls, meaning like the, the beer, um, the soda sales, merchandise, that type of thing. Um, and we encourage the majority of our vendors to um, accept credit cards as well. So if yeah. you don't have, you know, cash on you, there's an ATM, you can sure. use it or you can use your credit card. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. yeah, cash is always good. Uh, cash and is not always something good. that people carry good. a lot these days. I, I never have cash on me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't either. And, and I, yeah, most of the vendors are good about that, but you never know when the oh, internet yeah. goes down mm -hmm. and something doesn't work. So if you want to get something and... Always be prepared. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, what types of vendors are we going to have out there? I remember seeing quite a variety in the years past as I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about the types of vendors that we have out there selling their wares. So we have all sorts of vendors. That's pretty much our main goal when choosing vendors is to choose um, the widest variety possible, whether it's with our food vendors, with our nonprofits, with our arts and crafts. We have a huge variety of vendors. So we're still actually making those final selections on some of our craft vendors, commercial vendors, things like that. But as always, we're planning on having just about anything you can imagine at the street fair and with our food. Um, handcrafted and commercial items. Uh, uh, we, we try to accept vendors that have, it's getting much harder, you know, because a lot of these vendors um, now sell their stuff on Etsy. Right. And, you know, and it's you dragging it out, coming to a festival and that type of thing. But um, we, we always try to and pride ourselves on being fair and balanced with our process and make sure that we accept vendors that offer things that you can't go somewhere and purchase locally. Sure. You know what I mean? I mean, now our downtown area has those types of things, you know, but uh, th we, we really try very hard to make sure that we get a good blend of arts and craft, um, handcrafted items, as well as some commercial mixed in, too. That's good, and that's good to know it. Our vendor yeah. committee is actually all volunteer. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of um, people or um, vendors or people who are interested in being vendors don't realize that the people who choose the vendors are actually all volunteer. So it's amazing the amount of work that they do per year to make sure that, that we get quality vendors and changing our process, making sure it's um, up to date, um, easy for them to navigate, and then simply choosing our vendors. It, it's amazing what our vendor committee does. Absolutely. Well, that's good. So let me ask you one final question after the vendors is, so I'm coming downtown and I want to park. Tell me a little bit about the parking downtown and how I would find out what to do. That would be one of our well, last things. You know, we here. haven't talked about the ballpark, you know, so um, there is some construction going on in the middle of our festival footprint. Uh, this awesome stadium is being built, so right now we're experiencing a little bit of growing pains. So with that being said, we'd like to encourage all of our patrons to keep an open mind. Um, and necessarily some of the spots that you've parked in in the past may now be a paid parking lot. Um, so uh, we encourage everyone, the free parking is Cumberland County Courthouse, the City Anderson Street lot, which is behind uh, um, Capitol School, that corner down there. And there are, uh, there's a huge uh, lot that's over by BB&T off of Ray Avenue. A lot of patrons park there as well. Those are the big free areas to park. And then there is the parking deck and other areas in the downtown area um, where you can pay to park. Um, and there's those sweet little honey holes that a lot of people don't know about but know how to navigate to. Um, you know, it's, it's the conference that we just came from. That's the number one thing that patrons complain about. But to be very honest with you, um, our community finds a way to make it happen. So um, we, we also pride ourselves on making sure that we don't tow vehicles. So if you've parked somewhere you're not supposed to and you get towed, it was not the Dogwood Festival or the City of Fayetteville that did it. It was a private owner. So we're just telling everyone to, to make sure that they know that that large lot that everyone used to park in by the hotel is now under construction. That's right. It's a little yeah, so a problem trying to park there now because it's absolutely. a little under. Uh, but, but what a great way to show our community where the ballpark is actually going. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. 
Yeah, they actually started pouring concrete there in the last couple I of days. I know. Which it's is been, it's exciting. been exciting to watch how it's been developing thus far. But that is a good point. And, and to your point, there are lots of places to park downtown, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of places available. Uh, there is a map on the city's website mm -hmm. uh, where people can go to learn where to park, uh, which will be helpful. But, uh, but as you said, and I've found as I go downtown myself quite a bit, that there are places to go and, and driving around. And uh, again, sixth largest city in, or sixth largest city in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a big city and, and sometimes you have to drive a little bit to find a spot Absolutely. and then walk to get where you're going, but it's not too far uh, to get to the downtown area. So nope. that's a good thing. Well, I think we're kind of running out of time here. I've been told to wrap <laughs> this up. So uh, we had a lot of things to cover today. We've Thank really you. talked about pretty much everything I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I hope we covered from your side uh, as well what we've wanted. Last thing I'll ask you is what is your website address if people want more mer more information? Uh, FayDogwoodFestival.com. FayDogwoodFestival.com. Okay. And we want to say on behalf of our board of directors and our staff, thank you to the city of Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. We cannot do this event without our partnership with this city. So thank you. Well, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a pleasure and we're glad to be able to work together to bring this great event there. So ladies, thank you very much thank for you. joining us today and we look forward to the Dogwood Festival and praying for good weather here in the next couple weeks as we come up on uh, yet our 35th or 36th iteration. 36th. 36th yes. iteration of the Dogwood Festival this year. So please come downtown and join us.